This video is sponsored by Surfshark. What were some of your favorite Flash games growing up? I know some of you immediately thought of Alien Hominid, one of the poster boys of Newgrounds back in the day, and for a good reason too. Behemoth is now known for only delivering an extremely unique and special catalog of games, each brimming with personality and really fun gameplay. Most of these games are online co-op, which leads to extremely chaotic gameplay especially the new game they just dropped, which is a sequel to the original Alien Hominid. Not only that, but they also dropped the OG game in an HD remaster, so today, we are going to be 100%ing both of these games. But first, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a high-value VPN which allows you to change regions with the click of a button. What's the point, you may ask? Do you currently feel there's nothing to watch on Netflix? One click of a button, you're now in another country with access to dozens of new shows and movies. Better yet, if you game on a regular basis like me and use software like Discord, it keeps your IP hidden, preventing things like DDoS attacks and encrypts your data, which adds another layer of security. This will keep your passwords, videos, which is a big deal for me, and other things like photos safe. Stuff like this happens more than you would think, believe it or not, but using a secure VPN service like Surfshark, you're 100% safe. They allow unlimited devices, meaning you only need to own one account for all of your electronics, and using promo code CRONKLE, you can get up to six additional months for free during their exclusive Black Friday deal. Thanks a lot to Surfshark, and remember to click that link in the description if you're interested. Now back to the action. Every Behemoth game has a very large catalog of weapons, cosmetics, and other unlockables to collect. The new Alien Hominid Invasion game is not an exception to this rule. As you can see here, they have a guidebook, which counts your entire percentage of completion. To reach 100%, we need to gather all of the weapons and mutations, every boost type available, the security clearance page, which requires level 50, discover every enemy, minus one, because they're undiscoverable for some reason. It goes without saying, but every achievement, all of the non-holiday exclusive heads and hats, and lastly, every color pigment. For the sake of simplicity, we'll use the same achievement counter I always use for my achievement videos. I find it somewhat hard to explain the gameplay of this game. If you're familiar with the other Behemoth games, let's say for simplicity's sake, it's if you took the personality of Pit People and took a somewhat similar gameplay approach to Castle Crashers. The main difference with this game is that it follows a sort of roguelite approach. By this, I mean you do runs and during these said runs you level up sort of like castle crashers during each run you have these squares on the map you have to traverse until you reach the top which then is your map's boss that you need to fight the gameplay is very similar to the original game heck it's even more crazy and chaotic somehow i want to say we didn't even know what was going on hours into our gameplay but that's kind of the point i think you just shoot a lot you run around and you complete some objectives then you leave after that, you level up, get some new items to make a build with, and repeat until you fight the bosses. Before getting to the first boss, we earn four achievements. Killing my first enemy, dying for the first time, and you got a bag. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. <laughs> gaining 110 coins in a single level, gain 110 lunch money, and gaining level 5. Before reach level 5, why do we have gooblets on our back? They're laughing. <laughs> the boss arenas are somehow even more chaotic, and I'm unsure if it's because I played multiplayer the whole way through, but the bosses themselves were extremely tanky and took a lot of hits. Oh, I just got destroyed. Turret, turret. It's almost dead. I did it. That's our first of the six main storyline bosses down, and also another achievement for destroying our very first HQ. Another way to level up your characters faster is a riskier but really rewarding mode where you lose all of your items on death. However, you gain a boatload more XP. This was extremely worth using early on as I was gaining a ton of levels and very fast. Reaching level 25 was a breeze. However, unexpectedly, the third boss was surprisingly really difficult. Oh my gosh, that sucks. Ew. Our items, no. We lost everything. And not just once, but multiple times in a row. <gasps> no! Oh. oh God. At least we gained the achievement for dying 10 times, right? It was painful stuff, and we had to start memorizing boss patterns in order to even stand a chance. 
The main problem was that this boss could only be shot high up. Also, the AI loved to keep his distance whenever we attempted to get close. Our solution? Find a platform and camp it, of course. Have him come to us instead. This made him significantly easier, so if you're also stuck on him, give that a shot. We have to finish him now. Yes! Yes! Thank goodness. Now that marks our third HQ, and we have quite a bit of catching up to do as the early achievements in video games tend to pop fast. We raised 2,000 cash total by selling some extra items we had in our backpacks. Literally selling an item was an achievement, so that's two right there. Oh, two achievements. Killing 50 of these grenade enemies, but also killing a total of 510 enemies. Condition normal, condition normal. Oh, I got an achievement. Using an ability 100 times, me spamming this oh, jetpack ability right. made this one happen very fast. Hey, use your Ooh. mutation ability 100 times, just like you. Completing a level without jumping, pretty self-explanatory, but it was honestly kind of hard not to push X. Killing 50 flybots and blowing up 10 sky vans. And lastly for now, another coinbase achievement, collecting 220 coins in one run. Oh, there we go. Finally got that stupid lunch money one that you got ages ago. Already 17 achievements and only halfway done the story. Before moving on, we had to turn off the mode as we were losing way too many items now, but we gained a lot of levels, so whatever, it was worth it. There was a couple map specific achievements we wanted to go for, starting off with doing a whole mission without entering a single hideout. The hideouts are basically a shop where you can stock up on items and lives. It's almost always worth going there as it can potentially save some lives during your run, so not going at all could potentially be more dangerous. Well, yes, but actually no. It would probably be more difficult on insane difficulty, but but not really on anything lower. During our fourth boss run, I got the achievement for reaching level 50 and also the achievement for reaching five total hideouts. Looking back now, I think my least favorite boss is this bee guy. Not really because he's that hard or anything, but man, does he love wasting our time with this move. With lots of gold now in our pockets, it is now time to mass refresh the shop for many different collectibles. Alemousek, get him. Ew, another Alemouth thing. The shop prices were very low, so I found myself just sitting here, sometimes for an hour at a time, just looking for anything I didn't already have, be it pigments, hats, or weapons. It's something I did every shop during every run. Now to finish up this run, we zoom to the fifth boss, who actually isn't a robot this time. He's pouring one out. Don't kill him, Zach. I know what you're thinking. Zach? Yeah, you let him live. No! No! It's glue, man. Wait! Oh Juice my man. god, he's the boss? Ow. Oh my god, dude, chill with your cluster bombs. Ow. <laughs> oh my god! Ow. At least it took the liberty of reviving me, man. I'm trying. I think he's dead, like, pretty much. Yeah, he might have been a mini-boss. I hope not. I hope he was a real boss. Yes, dude! Thank God. No deaths, just pure skill. During this run, we gained the achievements for killing 20 shield boys and 30 beam bots. Oh, uh, the big ball thing. Oh, killed 30 beam bots. But also selling 30 items and unlocking 20 pigments with that cash in the shop. Oh shoot, unlock 20 pigments. On our way to the final boss, we attempted to also get the achievement for clearing 8 city blocks in a single run. This made our run much harder as every block you enter and finish, the bar at the bottom fills more and more. This bar tells you the danger level and when we finished 8 blocks, it was basically maxed out. Which meant enemies were way more dangerous and there was way too many for us to handle. However, that's okay as I spam rolled through all the projectiles on the screen. Actually, 500 bullets to be exact for another achievement. Oh, but I mean, yeah, we, we still died a ton, totaling our death count to be above 33 times. I know because there was another death count achievement. Oh, what the? We gotta fight the UFO already? Bro, there's just so much shit. Yeah, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be dodging. Everything. There it goes. Ooh, that doesn't good. New phase. Oh, do not. We can get absorbed in that. What the heck? Alien hominid? Invaders? No! Ah! Ow! Oh, for... F I think we're okay, maybe? Are they squatting up and helping? Yeah, let's go! Did I speak too soon? Oh! No! 
This is so very alien hominity. Me when I hit the alien hominity. Oh. It's not dead. Oh, now it's dead. Oh, Giga <laughs> Chads. Yo, what now? Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we got a nice ending. Okay, wow. That was it. A genuinely nice ending. And with that is the full storyline. All of the chapters are completed. What is a game without an achievement for beating the campaign, right? This is far from over though. We still have a ton of extra collectibles and achievements to grind out. Thankfully, it's a roguelike though, so we can jump right back into a randomly generated run. First things first, there was an achievement to be all five ways of survival mode, which are randomly found on a city block. These waves get incredibly dicey, and to top it off, you only get one life. That's it. Funny thing is, during the survival run, I gained an extra two achievements for a total of three on completion. One for taking a grand total of 15,000 damage. Oh, oh, Take a it? total of 15,000 damage in my lifetime. And another for reaching level 75. Turn around and nuke. Oh. oh, we're almost there. One, one more. Yes. Yes. And I'm level 75 now. Where's my achievement for that? There it is. The next achievement would have been much easier if it were a brand new save file way earlier on as it's to beat a level without taking more than 30 damage. I have no idea if it were luck, skill, or the boss was just easy, but I just so happened to do this on a boss level. Got her. Let's go. Dude, I think I almost did that in under 30 damage. I think I might have gotten it, but I, I took 15 right at the end, so... Oh, I actually did it on the boss dude on top of that too we managed to beat the entire mission without dying a single time pretty nice set of accomplishments that run if i do say so myself the longer you stay in a mission the crazier it gets our next achievement is for surviving 10 minutes during one level keep in mind that around the five minute mark the danger meter fills to max the game nearly reaches an unplayable difficulty but it's really funny nonetheless holy oh hell God. this is hell no ow ow like Ow! <laughs> Ow! <laughs> no, I died! Oh no. Run! Get out of there. Ow! 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 Yes, we got it! This is the part of the game where it reaches a very grindy period. These jetpack enemies here can be jumped on and thrown. When they land, they explode. You then have to blow up 20 enemies with that said explosion. Problem is, the explosion does not much damage, and there was also two of us needing the achievement, so we competed for kills half the time. You're kidding me, that didn't... Oh, I got it! Here we go. Next, I had the life steal a total of 5,000 health, which actually wasn't that bad, but it was also a bit grindy. I just made a simple percent life steal build and ate people's faces off for the life back. This made getting 5k life steal only take a couple of hours. Aha! Life steal 5k damage is done. Deflecting 10,000 damage total is quite a bit grindier. Using the deflect shield ability is the way to do this, but 10,000 damage is quite a lot. A good way to do this is to stay in a level for a very long time, just like the 10 minute achievement. Make the game near unplayable and just hold your shield out as long as you can. You can usually reflect 500 damage per level using this strat. Even those normal bullets do 21, so that's not bad. Yeah, no. I'll deflect those. See, that was 40 already. I got it. There we go. 10,000 deflect. Simply just playing the game can garner achievements too. Destroying 12 full HQs and killing 2,500 enemies were both achievements we got along the way. But there was also one to kill a total of 5,000 enemies too, which took hours of my time after I finished every single achievement else. There we go. 5,000 kills. That took a little while. There was also some really rare enemies that needed to be slain as well. The frog bots were one of them. Frog bot. Frog, Ooh. kill him! I gotta kill it. Do oh, oh. And the key to finding a decent chunk of them were when they are in swarms on a city block, and killing a total of 20 of them for the achievement. There's a frog, Zach. Got him. He's dead. Yes, 20 frogs killed. Even rarer, though, were the armored vans. These are complete random and decided to appear very, very rarely. But luckily, during our insane level runs, we managed look at to that? take up the 10 needed. Oh, Finn! Oh, Finn! The achievement didn't pop for some reason. 
Maybe after the round. I don't know. There it is. That's 10 vans. Woo! One last achievement, and we always save the best for last. Beating every single boss once more, but on the insane difficulty. The only thing the insane difficulty changes is your health and your max life count. The game is already hard enough, so you get 40% life total and only one life. Did I kill that? Oh, wow. This is actually pretty brutal, and you can die in one hit if you're not careful. At this stage of the game, thankfully, we had our builds fully figured out and we were no longer half bad anymore. Our first run through, though, was abysmal. Oh my! It's safe to say we weren't ready to get one hit yet. But once we got a little bit more used to the difficulty, we took down the first but easiest boss in the game. Ah, uh, thing really needs reload. to hit. There, yeah, we there we go. Let's go. One out of six down. The second boss, the gun boss, was still the hardest boss in the game. I mean, we made it harder by hunting frogs during our runs, but still. Nice! Shotgun's so strong, dude. What the hell? We're so used to dealing with this BS that we just dumpstered him. Now the hard part's over. <laughs> <laughs> Boss 3, the wasp guy, took a couple of attempts because of the high amount of enemies on the screen. Oh my, I'm dead. Also, I failed to mention how utterly painful running into bosses on normal city blocks were. On our way back to Wasp Man, we ran into our favorite gun friend once again. Oh my god, what the hell am I supposed to do now? Oh my. Bro. Oh. Mm, yeah, I thought so. Ding, 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 ding. Oh. Nuke, oh. nuke, 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 nuke. Nice! Nice! Oh, finally. You can shoot through the stinger? That's awesome. We had Glue Man as our next boss, and he's also one of the easiest bosses, too. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yo, I'm being juggled! We cleave right through him in one attempt. No! Finish him, finish him! Nice! Oh, thank god. Ball guy again. Yeah. Nice. I think we're good. Crazy. Nice. nice! Easy peasy. All right, one more. And we're like done the game. A little bit more grind, but one more boss, the UFO. But first, a pit stop for some hats. Sadly for this video, I won't be able to actually get the full 100% on this game as there are holiday restricted heads. Luckily though, we were playing during Halloween on this run, so I managed to get those at least. Bop, 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 oh, bop. finally! Bop, bop. The Beepop. ghost has been acquired. Okay, is it gonna like teleport us now or do we have to fight the fucking boss? We gotta fight it with all the ads, dude. Wait, what? Huh? The boss we encountered was Glue Man, not the Why? UFO. Sadly, it turned out you get to only encounter the UFO one time for, I, I don't really know. I guess because it was a storyline event only. So we had to play through the entire game again just to do the fight. All right, let's do this, Dylan. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Yep. Oh, here we go. Is the next phase the slam phase? Yeah. Now. Now. Don't. Oh, maybe not. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, Ooh. I'm dying. No oh, life steal. Oh. Nice. I'm trying to life steal. It's just the ads are so annoying for me. No, I got I got caught. Oh, it didn't kill me, surprisingly. Ow. Oh. But the nice. zero lives, and we got sucked up yeah. twice. All right. Okay, yeah, this might be the hard part. Yeah. Oh, these got... Oh, wait, no, they're, they're friendly. I forgot. Oh. Ow. Ow. Immediately. Like, my guy's just bouncing. Oh, you can, like, press A to jump. Yeah. That's what, I think that's what you gotta do. That. Okay, this is honestly pretty easy to <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. With your shotgun on this phase, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. Oh. I'm not doing damage. Yes! I think we did it. Did we do it? Double skip. Yes! Now I had every single thing required for a temporary 100%, except for just one hat. Since me and my friend needed separate heads, we went our separate ways to try our hands at what we needed. Turns out, all I needed was this medical mask. Oh my god! Yes! A full 100% on the new Alien Hominid game. And I know I'm doing this backwards, but whatever. 
Time to switch games. Alien Hominid HD. I've actually never played this game before, despite me hyping up Behemoth so much, but this game is seriously great. It made me completely understand the hype way back in the day, and honestly, the game aged like wine. This game is much harder than the new one though, in my opinion, at least on its hardest difficulty insane, which is what I ended up doing on my first playthrough. Main difference, you get one tapped because there's no health bars. Did I just get one tap? Did I just get one tap? You do have a couple continues though, unlike the new one, so there's that at least. The bosses in this game are also a dime and a dozen. Very commonly, they appear twice per stage, and man, they have a monstrous amount of health. So much so that my wrist was actually hurting during my playthrough because of my bullet spam. That's probably the first thing this game could have changed for modern times, but oh well. First and foremost, I should mention that there are only 12 achievements in this game. It's also very short too, which is expected for an old Flash game. The first achievement I obtained was literally for just beating the first level. Finally! Yahoo! Yahoo! I am so happy. Playing through this game made me realize some of the missed potential of the new one. Occasionally, some levels have special mechanics. <gasps> you can drive? The second level was on an active highway. Very cool in itself, but you could also drive the cars. To name a couple other cool levels off the top of my head, there was also a sled, battle toad sort of turbo tunnel level, and also a space level where you drive your UFO. I wish there was more special event city block levels in the new game that had special mechanics like that to spice up the gameplay, but maybe there will be updates like that down the road. <sighs> <sighs> I brought up the fact that the bosses have a ton of health already, but some of the bosses definitely suffer from weird jank mechanics too. There was a moment really early on where I was still really bad at the game, where I had to fight two tanks at the same time with little to no room. Not only that, but the normal agent enemies infinitely spawn too, and shoot randomly and unpredictable, leaving a bit of an unfair feeling. This is unfair. Oh my gosh, okay. Another boss that felt random was this big red bot guy. He had this weird phase where a bunch of scrap on, falls from I can the do sky, it. giving you little to no room to react. No. There's only a few encounters like this though, and the rest of the bosses felt pretty fun to fight. During my time playing, I discovered some of my characters missing mechanics like digging and eating heads. I immediately remembered there was an achievement to eat 10 heads in a row without landing on the ground. The agents have really weird movement and sometimes juked me, making it actually a little bit hard. Munch. <gasps> no! But once I reached a certain level during the Kami stages, there was a spot where they had to run to, into my death trap, making it easier to do. Oh, I got it. Let's go. Make that 12. Make that 13. Let's go. The game honestly wasn't that bad. No! until you enter Area 51 nearing the end of the game. For me, even the simplest of puzzles are my kryptonite, so a simple game of Simon Says was taking more lives than I'd like to admit. Oh no. <gasps> You're joking! Not only that, but at the end of this level, there was this really, really hard boss, so I had to do it many more times than once. Game over. Oh. The final boss was on another level. He has multiple phases, however, the first one was definitely the hardest. Nonetheless though, he was my favorite and coolest boss in the game for sure. He's on my head! Oh. Stop. You ain't killing me. Got him. Ah. <sighs> Got him. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, hold up. Oh my gosh. What is this boss? It's like a freaking cuphead boss. Yes, I got him. Finally. Let's go. Complete the game on insane. Beating the game on every difficulty was a requirement. A simple difficulty switch in the main menus and skipping to the last level and beating the boss makes these achievements quick. And before you say it, I am aware that I didn't have to play through the whole game on insane. Just thought the challenge would be kind of fun. Okay, beat the game on friendly. Beating this guy without going through a single continue was another achievement. I managed to get a really good phase one on my normal difficulty fight, so I decided to go for it right here and now. Ah. 
Okay, that's not that bad. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Hey! Get away from me, man. We did it. Let's go. On normal. Not even friendly. I'm just that good. Maybe. <laughs> now that the main story is finished, it was time to clean up for the fast 100%. Starting with the achievement to kill 1,000 enemies in one run. I remembered a really good safe spot during an Area 51 mission that non-stop spawned dozen of enemies. Sitting here for a boring 10 minutes gained me nearly enough kills and a really sore wrist. There we go. During my story mode gameplay, I was unlocking hats, but also minigames too. There was a couple of achievements tied behind a few minigames, starting with the Super Soviet Missile Masta, a little chopperish Atari style game, and our goal here was to reach 5,000 kilometers in one run. Something more difficult than I initially expected. We're chilling. There's a bird. Dodged him. Dodged him. Ugh! I'm dead. They just trapped me up there. Is that an L? No. Right in. Okay, we're close. We're cruising. Yes! We did it. Our next minigame achievement was for any challenge minigame. Our goal was to survive a challenge for 10 minutes. At first, I didn't think the urban challenge was going to be possible. Then I realized you can just sit in cars for the whole 10 minutes. With your charge shot always held, you can one-shot the enemy cars that come in. Inside your vehicle, they're actually your only threat, making this more than likely the easiest survival map. Oh! That was a pretty quick 10 minutes. Starting from the very first level again, our next objective is to destroy 25 buildings without reaching a game over. On friendly difficulty, you start with 7 lives and 3 continues, making it pretty hard for that to happen. Each building takes 3 grenades each, and with power-up collectibles dropping 3 grenades per pickup, you shouldn't run out of grenades too. At around the 4th level, our 25th building was destroyed. There we go. On level 2-2, you encounter this giant yeti friend that you take control of for a limited time. Having him devour 50 agents was another achievement, but be careful. Moving too far to the right will make them stop spawning entirely, so ideally you just want to be standing still in one spot for this achievement. Ah. Uh, there we go. That's hungry yeti. There's already only one achievement left, and it's for basically 100%ing the game regardless. Unlocking every hat the game has to offer. There's a total of 30 hats in Alien Hominid HD, and when you finish the storyline, you're more than likely to have already 20 of them, as they are extremely simple to unlock. Going through the ones I'm missing one by one, you'll see just how easy this 100% ended up being. 1-4, destroy the fish are like plants. Building. Right here. Yeah! 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 22 I don't have. Destroy Harry Mommy's Daycare in 1-1. One, one. Oh my god, get wrecked. Right here. Eh, 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 eh. Another free hat. 23, 24. Don't have 24 either. Destroy the behemoth logo building in 1-4. No wonder I missed all these. Is that it right there? Is that the behemoth logo? The chicken? Yeah, it was. Wow. All right. 25, 26. 26 is the last one. Nice. Okay. One more. What do I have to do? 2-4. Dig slash suffocate before riding the snowmobile. They wanted me to experiment. Uh, yeah! That's literally all the achievements in this game. That's crazy. That's it. That's the 100% for both Alien Hominid Invasion and Alien Hominid HD. Let me know in the comments your favorite Behemoth game. Would love to know the general consensus. If you like the video, you know what to do. <laughs> Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring the video, and make sure to click the link in the description if you're interested for that sweet Black Friday deal. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.